How to photograph the supermoon step by step. Hello, Photopiller, Rafael the Bar here. Welcome to another video. When I say to photograph the supermoon, I don't mean to photograph the supermoon alone. Where is the fun in doing that? I mean to photograph it with an interesting subject. Let me give you a few examples. If you check our Instagram account, you'll see lots and lots of amazing moon photos taken by the Photopiller's tribe. Like, for example, this one taken by Gabriel Moro, or this one taken by Darren Cox. Well, if you wish to take photos of the supermoon like these ones, the first thing you you need is a plan. Once you've planned your supermoon chart, you'll have the shooting spot, the shooting date, and the shooting time the supermoon, for example, is aligned with your subject. So you can go and capture it. Believe me, planning the supermoon is much easier than it looks. If you wish to learn how to do it step by step, watch this video. To photograph the supermoon, you'll need your tripod and head, your camera, of course, and a telephoto lens. 300mm, 400mm, 500mm, or more. If your goal is to center the viewer's attention on your subject and the supermoon, the longer the focal length, the better. Here, if you have a crop sensor camera, you'll benefit of the multiplying effect on your focal length. And if you have a teleconverter, it might be a good idea to use it to get a longer focal length. Also, use an external shutter release or an intervalometer. The less you touch the camera, the better. Avoid vibrations at all costs, because vibrations produce blurry images. On the shooting date, arrive at the location one hour or so before the shooting time. Set up everything at the planned shooting spot and make sure that everything is stable. You can use the Photopills Augmented Reality to make sure that you are at the right shooting spot. Now, set the focal length you wish to use to get the framing you want. For example, 500mm. Set the aperture to f8 to get a nice deep depth of field. But be ready to use a wider aperture, like for example f5.6, when the light in the scene begins to fade away. Set the ISO to 100, but again, when the light in the scene begins to fade away, be ready to push it up to 400 ISO or even 800. Now, set the shutter speed that gives you the right exposure. For example, begin with a shutter speed of 1 divided by 160 seconds, take a test shot, check the histogram, and adjust the shutter speed until you get the exposure you want. But don't go over 1 second of shutter speed to avoid the motion blur in the moon due to the rotation of the Earth. Make focus on your subject, take a test shot, and make sure that both the moon and your subject are in focus. There is a simple way to make sure that you're using the right camera settings to get both in focus, the moon and your subject. And I explain it in this video. Check it out. If, when you're checking the exposure or the focusing to get the depth of field you want, if you see something that you don't like when you're checking the exposure or the focusing, the depth of field, just make the adjustments you need to get the result you want. Also, to be on the safe side, I recommend you to bracket the exposure. Because as the supermoon rises, the sun is setting, so the light is fading away fast. So, to nail the exposure, I recommend you to bracket it. A one-stop bracketing of three photos will be enough in most situations. Now, if you wish to learn more on how to photograph the supermoon or the moon in general, you can do two things. First, download our super detailed moon photography guide. I'm gonna leave a link in the description of this video and also on the first comment below, so you can go and download it. And second, watch our free moon photography course. You have it here. Watch it. And if you like this video, give a like, subscribe, and I'll see you next Wednesday with another video. And remember that you have the power to imagine, plan, and shoot legendary photos. Bye.